Okay, hey everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about self-draining decks and in particular, is it an absolute critical feature for you to have in your offshore trailer boat? Um, do you need it and what does it mean if you don't have a self-draining deck? And I'm going to give you guys some practical examples about a few situations where I've had water come into the boat and how I manage those situations. So anyway, I'll just step into my office here, get comfortable, or just give me a minute. Okay, self-draining decks. In a nutshell, what they're all about is allowing water that comes over the sides in your boat to effectively run out of your boat back out into the, uh, into the ocean through a one-way, I guess, door or, or valve. Um, there are many different mechanisms uh, on the market. So I just want to give you guys a few words of caution when it comes to self draining deck implementation so and then I'll get into the other examples we spoke about now as you can see this deck here is fully welded around the sides now believe it or not there are plate aluminium self-draining decks out there which are not fully welded like that they're actually glued on the sides which is a really poor implementation and they have been known to leak and they absolutely do leak sometimes. So be careful of glued decks. You want a fully welded in deck. And then there's also the actual scupper drains themselves. So there's a bunch of different designs on the market. And um, a lot of the cheaper quality um, scupper systems also tend to leak. So what that means is you will actually get water ingressing back into your boat. So look, be careful of a glued in deck and be careful of a, a dodgy uh, scupper system. Just again, just, just do your research and be aware. Okay, so the self-draining deck, really it's all about, you know, water comes into your boat and it just naturally runs down towards the back of your boat. I don't have it here to show you, but effectively you have a one-way valve or little door system there which will allow water to run down into a generally a lower part of the boat and then exit the boat. Now, this boat doesn't have a self-draining deck and the way that it works is also very simple. So let's just have another look. Uh, water simply runs down the sides or from anywhere and effectively everything under there is fully welded and sealed and the water has nowhere to go but to end up in this bilge area here and obviously then you just pump your water out. So not self-draining, but very simple and effective nonetheless. Now, because self-draining decks effectively need to be, uh, the deck needs to be above the water line for gravity to do its thing and allow that water to run out. Boats that don't have a self-draining deck um, can often have a more of a freeboard, um, so I guess that's the height between the side of the boat here and the floor. The 670HT has got an 800mm freeboard, which is really good. Now, the um, the bigger bar crushes, the 730 and the 780, which do have self-draining decks, I think they have about a, a 720 freeboard, which is still good. Why I'm mentioning this is because some boats with self-draining decks actually have quite a low freeboard and anything around I think 600 mil to be honest should really be avoided <clears throat> excuse me that's a really low um, freeboard and it doesn't feel that sort of comfortable and safe being out in the water I've had a few boats with 600 mil freeboards and I really I don't really like it to be honest I like something around uh, the 700 mil or above, that's what I would say on that matter. A lot of fiberglass boats as well have quite a low freeboard at the back as they slope um, downwards, but yeah, so I guess they're the three sort of things to be aware of. Dodgily sealed decks, dodgy scuppers, and really, really low freeboards because of the self-training deck. Now look, I've been running the bar crushers since 2018, and I must admit, they're such a 
strong, uh, well put together boat that I've found myself running these boats a lot harder than I've run other boats in the past. So what I mean by that is longer days offshore, out in rougher conditions, going faster, etc. and just having no dramas in doing so. So 150 kilometers in a day, offshore is not uncommon for us. Big swell, big chop, 40, 50 kilometer winds some, sometimes were out there in, um, which was like my last video a couple of weeks ago. And I come back and there's no drama whatsoever. Um, just to give you guys some context. Um, previous to this, I had lots of fiberglass boats giving in a similar sort of punishment. And I kid you not, I was constantly breaking things, cracking transoms, floors, snap seats out of a floor, uh, things constantly falling off. I would literally come home after a trip like that, like 150, 200 Ks offshore, and there would be things falling off, screws all over the floor. I didn't know where they were coming from, and I was constantly working on my fiberglass boats, and that's just, that's just not even a joke. I just got sick of working on fiberglass boats with things falling apart. So I'm giving this boat a fair punishing. I go out in absolutely all conditions, rain, hail, or shine, uh, doesn't matter what the weather's doing, as long as it's not treacherous and totally unsafe, we are out there in this boat. Uh, often we're, we're the only boat out there. Um, you know, maybe that's because there's no fish around, I don't know, probably. Uh, so that's just a bit of a backstory about how we, we've been using the boat so far. So it's not like we're going out there and, you know, fishing on the calmest days only. <clears throat> okay, a few different use cases of where water has come in the boat and what what has it really meant for me to be totally honest with you guys as i always am uh often we're out there and it just rains it rains all day long so a few trips back it poured the entire day now what did that mean in practical terms firstly i didn't even notice it was raining we're under the hard top just didn't even notice trolling around in practical terms raining the entire day I'm not kidding. All it meant was probably about twice in the entire day, I looked back at the bilge under here and it was literally full with water getting close to the top, about an inch from the top. I hit the switch on the bilge pump. Uh, I pumped the water out. And that was honestly the end of it. That's that's kind of all it is, okay? That's use case one, raining. Use case two. Use case two. Offshore in very windy, rough conditions, okay? Last trip out, um, 40 kilometer winds, reasonable swell, sometimes gusting up to 50, 60. You guys would have seen, I was filming out the sides and everything, and there was basically no spray coming into the boat. Almost none. I'm not kidding. Uh, I guess it's probably the hard top design on this boat, but virtually no spray or water comes into this boat. And that's why I've said before, um, I just don't, basically don't get water in the boat. Okay, and at the end of that day, we did well over 100 kilometers offshore in total that day. Didn't use the bilge pump, pump once. Um, some spray did come over every now and then, sure. Um, and got back to the ramp and there was about, ooh, a maximum of two inches of water in the bilge. Took the plug out, away the water drained. Okay, so that's another use case. <coughs> uh, use case three, bar crossings on that same day there was a fair swell running out across the bar. Every single, it was a bottom of low tide, every single wave was literally breaking. And they were of decent height, like pretty big solid waves. Um, I had to time my crossing, every wave was breaking. I knew I was going to be hitting one of those waves like mid kind of curl. There was no just getting in between. The swell was quite close together. <laughs> Hit the throttle, um, basically, literally smashed through three sort of six foot curling uh, waves. You know, water sort of went everywhere up in the air and whatever. Um, hit it straight on. Again, not a single drop of that water 
actually made it into the boat. And I'm regularly doing bar crossings uh, like that. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of that has to do with the hard top and the design. So I do have family members who shall remain nameless who have had several bar crossings where they've physically had in runabouts and open boats waves like that basically come over the screen and into the boat. And that's not a good situation, I agree. Um, but certainly with both the bar crushes that I've owned, that has never happened to me once. And I've done some pretty hairy uh, bar crossings. Okay, another use case, and this is a bit of a stupid story. Uh, first bar crusher, 670C, put it in at the boat ramp at Naruma. They actually have a kill tank under the floor which has its own bung plug that I didn't know about. Put the boat in, tie it up to the jetty, walk off, walk around, do a few things. I walk back and the boat is seriously full of water. Okay, the boat had so much water in it, there was, it was like probably 12 inches deep, almost up to that side pocket there, the entire length of the boat. I don't know how many litres of water that would be, I can't even estimate it, but a damn lot. And it was so scary because I did not even know where the water was coming from or anything, how it was leaking. Uh, so I jumped into the sinking boat effectively, like it wasn't sinking, but um, it was still very, very buoyant. It hardly lowered in the water at all, even with all that water in it. <clears throat> so I basically jumped into the boat, obviously very stressed out. Uh, had a look around, still couldn't determine where the water was coming from. So what I did was I hit the bilge pump and turned the bilge pump on. And immediately I noticed that the water level had stopped rising. So the bilge pump was pumping the water out as fast as the water was coming in through the bung hole under the floor, which I didn't know about, which is one of those sort of, um, you know, I don't know, they're like a 25 or a 30 mil hole. I don't know how big they are, but one of the larger ones. And I was able to assess the situation calmly and work out where the water was coming from, opened up the hatch, um, found the bung, put it in there, and within about, I don't know, a few minutes, the bilge pump had pumped all of the water out of the entire boat. So look, that was a quite a scary situation, and um, I don't know, you know, maybe a, maybe a self-draining deck would have helped me in that situation, potentially, but look, that was really a, a silly situation, and that's why I always tell you guys about, you know, put the bungs in, because I've been there a few times, but um, the bilge pump, uh, stop the water going out uh, or coming in faster than it was going out, if that makes any sense. Um, got all the water out and there was no drums, but a very scary situation. So look, there are a few different scenarios of some of the types of situations I've been in in this boat. Now, in a nutshell, apart from that situation where I basically caused that myself, my own stupidity, I pretty much never get anything more than a few inches of water in that back bilge area in this bar crusher and my previous bar crusher. Okay, so that's that's it. That's all I'm dealing with. And I do use my boats pretty hard. So look, I get a lot of people questioning me um, whether a self-draining deck is mandatory for serious offshore fishing and furthermore I get a lot of people um, telling me that they are constantly getting water over the sides of their boat and you know they couldn't live without their self-draining deck and it's the best thing and all that sort of stuff and so I guess with what I've told you I'm a little bit vexed about those stories because I just don't get that level of water in my boat. And on the few occasions that I have had water in my boat, because of the design that I just showed you guys, where the deck is completely welded and sealed and the water always goes to the lowest spot, it is just so easy and just so effective anyway. And um, if I had to choose between having an 800mm freeboard, for example, or a 600mm freeboard, and a self-draining deck, I will literally choose the 800mm freeboard every single time because it gives you such a good feeling of 
uh, safety on the water. No one is gonna fall out of this boat. I have my kids on the boat all the time and it just needs to be really, really safe. So that's just, that's just how I feel about that situation. Now, look, do I like self, self-training decks? When they're done well, uh, fully welded, sealed, good scuppers, absolutely, I do. I like self-training decks. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with self-training decks. What I'm saying is that I don't value a self-training deck as uh, really high on my list of a mandatory requirement for my boats. And um, I'm all about serious uh, offshore fishing. So, it, an, uh, sorry, a self-training gear probably wouldn't even make my top 20 or 30 feature list uh, for a boat, you know? I'm looking at hull, shape, width, length, um, design, dead rise, construction, quality of craftsmanship, welding, underfloor, subfloor structure, hard top construction, design, windows front opening windows side opening windows you know like honestly i could rattle off probably 50 things that i think about before having a self-draining deck would actually come on my list now i may get a self-draining deck one day right don't get me wrong like i might upgrade this boat one day and that boat may have a self-draining deck but i can honestly assure you that i won't be buying any boat because of a self-training deck. So, a lot of people reach out to me because they're looking at, um, you know, manufacturers' websites and they see these claims about, check our boat out, it's got a self-training deck, it is such an amazing offshore boat and it's really cheap and all that sort of stuff. And like I said, the boat is probably, you know, does it even have a fully welded floor? Does it have a strong underfloor structure? Uh, a lot of them are very beamy in the front and they hit really hard into, you know, into the waves and they're really slow offshore, rubbish scuppers. So basically, to be honest, a really low quality offshore boat in many circumstances and they're claiming on their websites that they're the bee's knees because they've got things like a self-draining deck. So look, at the end of the day, um, I'm not here to convince you guys that I'm right, okay? I can't convince everyone on the internet that I'm correct and I'm not trying to be correct. As always, what I'm trying to do is just give you guys some information based on my own personal experience of nearly 40 years of boating now, literally thousands of trips offshore and bar crossings and things like that. And in all of that time, um, the only one time where the self-draining deck may have assisted is the one time that I actually stuffed up. So, uh, look guys, that's uh, my sort of feeling on that topic. Nothing wrong with the self-training deck. It's just not an important feature to me. It may be for you guys and that's absolutely fine. Uh, as always, happy to hear what you guys think. Um, trying to really grow the channel. Uh, uh, bait balling, so I'd appreciate if you guys could hit the subscribe button and um, like and share the videos, etc. and I'll, uh, Hopefully see you guys out in the water soon when this chicken wing of mine heals up a bit better. Alright, see ya.